Good morning. I'm Mary with Pinky Malls Cakes, Cookies, and Candy, uh, where we count our blessings <laughs> every day. Uh, uh, we're also known as uh, Sisters in the Kitchen, and Linda is not with me this morning, but um, I'll be making a dish that uh, I have made before. Um, this is a little bit different from the one I made before, because y'all know me, I like to switch things up. And I actually made this, it's a corn casserole. Uh, I actually made this for um, one of the members in our church, passed away, an elderly lady. And uh, it's it was one of the ladies that I always carried food to. And um, so we fixed a meal for the family. And one of the, one of the things that I fixed was a corn casserole. And so everyone enjoyed it so much. And some of the things that I used in this corn casserole, I only used a half a package or something. So I said, well, I'm just, instead of doing something else with it, I was just gonna go ahead and make another corn casserole um, so that y'all could, um, so I could use it. I don't like wasting things. <laughs> and uh, so I'm making a corn casserole this morning. Uh, Linda's at home and I'm sure she's watching and Carla is too. Um, so, um, we thank y'all for joining us, joining me this morning. I want you to know all your prayers that you've been praying for me. I am feeling wonderful. Yesterday, I started feeling better. And then I got up this morning and I'm feeling great. I am feeling more like myself yesterday and today than I have in months. So, thank the Lord for it. I had a little meeting in my... <laughs> with my Lord yesterday. <laughs> I was getting dressed for church and, and, and I said, Lord, I just talked to him. You know, it wasn't, I wasn't praying. I just had a good talk with him and told him, I said, you know what? I've got faith. I have a tremendous amount of faith uh, and believe that he can do anything, which I know he can. And I said, you know what? I want to get to feeling better now. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm taking my medications, but I need my mind to be clear. I don't know if y'all understand what I'm talking about or not, but when you feel your mind feels foggy or something and you just cannot put things together and you just feel like you're, you're invisible, that feeling is horrible. And that's the way I have been feeling. Well, I want you to know yesterday was Mother's Day and God did, he did something special for me. I just thank him, I thank him all morning long and yesterday too. So um, anyway, I had a good Mother's Day. I hope that all of y'all did. <clears throat> I, uh, <clears throat> all three of my kids, they all got me something of course and I thought about showing it to you, but uh, it just take up too much time, so I'm not going to show you. But um, I'm excited about one of Linda got the uh, stuff that um, to fix my back porch. I've been wanting my back porch painted, and so she's the one that painted my front porch, so she's going to steam clean it and paint it for me. And and then she got me another thing too. And then Carla got me some things, and Chuck got me some stuff. And Linda gave me something. I just, I'm blessed. I am blessed, and I thank the Lord for it every day. Now, so let's get back to my corn casserole. Um, I preheated my oven to 350, and um, I've got a um, little skillet here. I've got a half a cup, no, not a half a cup, a half a stick, which is four tablespoons of butter in this pan. And, I've, and I'm going to saute, and on the recipe, on the member's page, I said a fourth a cup of chopped minced onion. Uh, I'm not measuring this. Um, this has come out of my freezer where I had uh, had been uh, made some the other day. And I didn't measure it, but it's close to it, I can tell you. And if it's not, that's okay, too. I'm going to turn this burner on. Uh, I'm going to saute a chopped onion. I mince my onion because I don't care for onion that much. So um, I, um, I I mince it so it won't be, I won't bite down into onion. So I'm gonna saute this just a little bit, uh, mostly just to, to uh, soften the um, onions. Used to, I didn't, I didn't do, the, didn't saute the onions. I used to just put them in there. 
but um, I don't want to taste an onion whenever I eat my corn casserole. So doing this, they're completely uh, disintegrated in your corn casserole whenever once it gets once you cook it. So I'm going to saute that for a few minutes, and we'll throw this in the trash. And um, anyway, it's a I made yesterday. Um, we had we had our meal catered yesterday. Linda and Chuck did, and um, we had corn on the cob. Well, we didn't eat all the corn on the cob, so I took the corn off of the cob, uh, the corn cobs, whenever uh, uh, yes last night, because I didn't want to waste the corn. So I cut this off. This is a big like whole kernel. This recipe uh, requires three cans. Uh, of whole kernel corn and two cans of cream style corn. So this right here is probably equal to two cans. You drain your corn, but this is probably at least two, maybe a little bit more, but I'm using this fresh corn that I, I took off the corn on the cob. And um, when this, when the onions and the butter get sauteed, get soft, and then I will be putting it into a 9 by 13 inch dish. I uh, I thought about making half of this amount because this is a pretty large dish just for us, but then I thought, well, no, I'll just take it to somebody I, um, and give it away. I had a lot of compliments on my corn casserole, which my corn casserole is a little different from a lot of people's. Um, there's so many ways you can make corn casserole. You know, you can make it, um, some people use the sour cream and, and, and different things, ingredients. I don't use that. Um, so I'll, um, I use a lot of cheese, but, um, and some people don't use cheese in the corn casserole, but that's just my preference. I like cheese, so that's what I'm doing. Um, I, um, I was thinking about this morning, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time is whenever um, we, when we do our, our videos, but I guess because Linda and I both were talking about this, we get up so early, by 10 o'clock, we've done, done a lot of things. I was thinking, one of these days, I'm just going to get on there and video before 10 o'clock because I'm up and I'm ready to go. I, when I get up, I'm ready to do whatever I'm, whatever I'm planning on doing that day. Uh, I have a lot to do today, but I probably won't get everything I want to do because this is my problem. When I feel as good as I do today, there's so many things that I want to do, I'm going to have to pace myself. But I, I will pace myself today because I've got to take uh, Brayton has a doctor's appointment. I got to take him to that. So that'll that'll. That'll slow me down, which is okay, which I probably need that. Like I said, I'm not going to cook these onions. I'm just sauteing them, just getting it a little soft and tender. I do cook, bake this for an hour, so I won't be able to stay on, um, but I'll come back on and show you when it's done. But I know I've got seen corn casseroles before. Probably all, probably all of you made them. It's nothing new. <laughs> it's nothing new. My kids all, and grandkids loves it. Oh, my grandkids call me little old Miranda. She's such a sweet little mama. She's the youngest granddaughter. It's Carla's daughter. Um, and she, um, she called me and she said, Memo, I just had to call you. And she had her kids. She, uh, she did FaceTime, showed me her kids. Um, now, I've sauteed this all I want to. And I'm going to put it in this, in this, in my nine by thirteen inch pan. This is a very, very rich corn casserole. The way I make it, got a lot of butter in it. But you know what? Corn and butter goes together good, doesn't it? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Uh, brush and I'm going to brush the sides of this dish with this with this butter. That helps it from sticking so much uh, when it's cooking. Oh, I dropped a little grease on the a little butter on the burner there. 
that's what I do. I just kind of slosh it around a little bit on the sides. Oh, goodness. I need to get my own. Wipe that off. Okay, now I'll add my corn. This is my fresh corn that I put in here. And this is, like I said, this is probably at least two cups, maybe a little bit more. But I'm going to put this. This is going to be even better using fresh corn than what I made the other day. But you can use canned corn. A whole kernel, you drain it. You don't want to. Now I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to bring this over here to the counter so y'all can see more. Uh, and I forgot to, uh, also I forgot to tell y'all that I'm giving away one of these little mini whisks this morning. Can you see it? The little mini whisk. I'm giving one of these away this morning. So put on there, um, where you're from. We're doing a state. So put where you where you live, the state you live in, and um, and then when we announce it, I need I'll need your address. So don't forget to put your address in there. All right. And this this is goodness, that sure looks like a lot of corn. <laughs> that looks like that may be three that may be three cans, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, put this can of corn drained. That's a lot of corn. And then this is my cream. I just I just had great value. Um, put the cream corn in. Any any uh, brand you have. This one's gonna have so much stuff in it that it probably would make a difference. The brand groceries has got so high to. Uh, you have to, sometimes you have to go back to something that doesn't cost quite so much. All right, now, I just put, I don't know what I put on there. This is a half a teaspoon of salt. I don't think I put a measurements on there. I think I'm going to put um, a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper, black pepper. And let me throw this in the trash. Now this I put, and this is one reason that I'm doing the corn casserole today is because I used a half of this in the one I made Saturday. And so I needed to use the other half. This is Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix. This does have a little bit of sugar in it. If you don't have this, you can make your own mix. Uh, I'm gonna measure this to see how much is a half a box. And I, I, I estimated, so I'm not sure how much this is, a half a box is. That's two thirds and there's still some more. So it, see how much that is. Anyway, it's a little over two thirds cup. Make your own if you don't have the Diffy uh, cornmeal mix. That is up to you whether you add a tad of sugar. To me, on this amount here, I probably would use a, um, a fourth a cup, a meal, and maybe two tablespoons of flour, and a little bit of, maybe a teaspoon of sugar. If you want sugar in it, that's up to you. But this, this Giffy corn mix does have a little bit of sugar in it. It's a little sweet, um, but it's good in your corn. And uh, so, mix this all up. And then there's one egg. I use carnation evaporated milk, and this is another reason I use the half a can. If you wanna use one of those little small cans, you can use a small can. Um, but I didn't have the small cans, I used a large can. And so, I'm, and what that is, is three-fourths a cup of evaporated milk. Oh, I'm gonna put that milk in here. 
I put the milk and the egg together and beat it. I don't want to just put that egg in there whole, so I beat it. I'm using the little mini whisk, which I really do like. Um, and just beat that with my milk. Of course, you know I have to slop my rag here. I probably should, um, I know I did. I beat my egg first the other day because once you get that milk in there, you kind of splatter it. But anyway, it's mixed up good enough. And then I put that in here. And I just stir it up in the same pan. You'll be stirring your onions and that butter in here. Of course, it's gonna have some more butter. I told you this is a rich corn casserole. <laughs> Just mix it up good. I'm not as, I'm not as good as Linda where she can answer questions. Okay. All right, now get this out of the way. want to get my cheese out too early. I use uh, cheddar and I use um, pepper jack. You can use, if you don't want those two combinations, that is strictly up to you. But, um, and I guess I will measure this. Let me see, will I get it out? I'll use this half a cup that way. Uh, I put about a cup of, um, of each cheese in it. I just put it in. That's a half a cup. I'm going to put another half a cup. I, have, I put a lot of cheese in it because I like it. I like a lot of cheese in it. I grated this last week and I put my little package inside so I can know what kind it was. This is pepper jack. You can put whatever cheese you like in it. Uh, it just adds a little bit extra. Okay, put that back in there. Move my measuring cups out of the way. And then I just mix it. Put this cheese in here, mix it up good. And I cook this for an hour. Uh, it, it depends on your oven. Um, when it start, it'll bubble. But when it uh, when it starts getting a little brown around the edges, I take it out and then I put a rich cracker topping on it. So I think I got it all mixed up, and that is really thick. Uh, but that um, cheese will help. Okay, now I've got the oven. And I, I, I probably do have more than two cans of whole corn corn in here because I, I didn't, because um, uh, I used that fresh corn. Probably would have been all it would take. But I'm going to put this in the oven. doing it in an hour and you have to do it in minutes. So now now I can use my box and I don't have to save it. I have a tendency to cook, uh, open things and you only use half of it. So then I try to think of something I can use the other half within a few days. So that worked out great. Now I'm gonna do the topping. 
and I gotta melt this. This is a whole stick of butter, eight tablespoons. So I'm gonna melt that butter. And this is my one sleeve of graham, I mean uh, Ritz crackers, and I'm just gonna mash them in the in the sleeve. I just mash down on it. And after I, after I mash them down and get them started, then I just take it and do this. And if, if some of y'all that's going late, uh, don't forget to put the steak that you're in. Um, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna choose a winner uh, to the steak that Carl and I picked out before we got on. Uh, to what state that we're going to give that whisk to, little whisk. I love those little things. I'd rather, you know, there's so many little projects and and, uh, and recipes that you just need a small whisk. And, uh, so, let me get my butter. Well, I had that on good, didn't I? Okay. Um, Well, reset. Timer. My own microwave sometimes. I can't even get it to work like I want it to. All right. Let me wipe this off here. So this is my one sleeve of Ritz crackers. And um, they crumbled up real fine. I'm going to put them in a bowl. Now remember, I have one stick of margarine. I'm not putting all this margarine in there at first. I'm going to pour it in there because I, I just want this barely damp. So, whatever I have left, I'm going to just pour in the, in the uh, casserole. And if it takes all that butter, I don't, I didn't think I used, you know, I don't write down nothing when I cook. So, if it takes all the butter, then I'll melt some more. Because I want, when, after the corn casserole cooks for an hour, I st I'll check it a little before an hour, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I cooked it an hour. I was getting dressed to go to the church that morning when I put it in the uh, oven, and I didn't really keep up with the time, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's at least an hour, um, but I want to pour butter on top of it after I put the crumbs on top. Even though this got butter on in these crackers, I like some butter, and it goes down into your corn casserole. And that's after it's been cooked. It won't take but about probably 15 minutes after I take it out and put the crumbs on top. I'll put it back in the oven for 15 minutes. And that's when I pour some extra butter over it and it sinks down into the... And it's kind of like buttering your corn after you cooked it. You know, you always, on the corn on the cob, you add your butter as you eat it. That's the reason that I like to put a little butter on top after the casserole is done because it gives it a really good flavor. I think that's all I that's all I'm gonna put on these. See, I just wanted them damp. Um and and the longer you stir it, the more they'll that uh, saturate that um that butter. I almost used all of it, but I may put a couple more tablespoons a butter in there um, and then whenever it's done it just it has a delicious flavor all right well now that's all of that um, so, uh, this week Linda and I are going to Mississippi we're leaving on Thursday and we won't be coming home until Monday so we won't be cooking tomorrow. We will be cooking tomorrow. I'll be at Linda's house tomorrow. We'll be, um, I forgot what she says she's making, cookies or something. Anyway, um, 
we'll uh, we'll be together tomorrow and then we won't be cooking on Wednesday of this week uh, because we'll be leaving on Thursday so that will give us a little bit of time that we can pack and and um, and get our thoughts together and everything. Now this is also in Mississippi. This is Florence, Mississippi at Jesus Name Tabernacle. Uh, we are having a meet and greet. So, and we're having a singing. This is Linda's church and has been for, I guess 50 something years. Um, but she doesn't live there, but she still supports that church and, and that is her church. Uh, I feel connected and part of this church also, but not as great as Linda. Um, we moved up there in 65, and um, I went to church there uh, two years before I got married, and then I got married in, in that church, and I had two of my children, Carla and Chuck, was born there in Mississippi. So I have a big connection to the church too, just not as much as Linda, because she stayed after I left. Uh, my husband, uh, he was a union bricklayer, and so they try, they sent him to Houston, Texas. Of course, we were wanting to get back to Texas because that's both of our, both of us, my husband and I both were raised in East Texas, but we met in Mississippi. <laughs> so anyway, in his, his parents and my parents and my grandparents knew uh, his family before I did. Um, but anyway, that's, the, uh, that's another story. But Mississippi, uh, we're going to have a singing. Linda uh, and uh, two other ladies, they have beautiful voices. They sang as a trio in the church. They got together uh, and sang after I left. I already had two children and a family, and uh, she got these two other girls, and beautiful. They have beautiful voices, so you don't want to miss that. We are going to to do a live video of that, and um, but if you want to come, we uh, we welcome you to come after the. After the singing, we're going to do some specials. Linda's making up a program, so we're going to have several specials. Linda and the trio will be singing several songs. And then we got, I think she's got two or three others that's going to sing solos. And we're going to sing some congregational songs where if you're, uh, if you're in the church, we're having the singing in the church. We're not having church. We're just having it in the church. Brother Smith uh, was so gracious to let us use the church building to do this. And so we'll have, um, we sh should have quite a large group, but we would love for y'all to come. If you, ca if you, close enough, we've heard from some of you, and, uh, but uh, we would like to kind of know, uh, you can text this number, the business phone, 903-235-4804. If, um, if you want to come, so we can kind of get an idea. We know how many is coming up to now. But we, if you are, if you changed your mind or something happened that you see that you could make it, we would just love for you to come. And then after the singing, if I'm not mistaken, and Linda, correct me if I'm wrong, I think our singing is going to be from 10 to 12. Linda, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's from 10 to 12. And then we'll break a few minutes and go to the, uh, what we used to call the youth center. <laughs> Back when I went there, it was, that's what it was called, the youth center. But it's actually the fellowship hall, which is right there next to the church. And we will go out there to the fellowship hall. And then we will have some hors d'oeuvres. It's not a meal. It's just some little snacks so we can meet y'all and visit with y'all and uh, and just have a nice time of fellowship. So I'm looking forward to it and Linda is ecstatic. I mean, she is just so excited because this is her church and she just is so excited. And two, the, um, the people, Linda did um, some little jobs for the church uh, and a lot of the, ch the people that are grown now, they were children then, and she was very involved with them. And so, and those kids just worship Linda, and they're adults now, and they still just think the world of her. 
and uh, so they're going to be there. It's going to be more like a, re the, a reunion from the 60s, so we've invited um, as many people as we could that went to church there when we both went there. It's going to be kind of like a, a reunion for us. So I'm going to get to see some uh, some people that I haven't seen in years. I am so looking forward to seeing them, um, especially Betty Fonville. She just has a place in my heart that uh, I can't even explain because she was my neighbor when I first got married. And um, just a beautiful person. Her and her husband at that time was just beautiful. And she taught me some things about cooking. So I am so excited to get to see her. And I think she lives in the, she lives in Washington, Portland, Oregon, somewhere up in there is where she lives. But she is going to do her best to come. And the two ladies that are singing with Linda, they're from out of state also. Well, one of them is, uh, one of them is, lives there in Jackson, but the other one's coming from out of state. So I'm excited, Linda's excited, and I just thank the Lord that I'm feeling better so that I can enjoy it more than I would if I was having that cloudy mind, whatever it is, I don't know, but I'll take it, the Lord heal me, whatever, if my body got used to the medication, I don't know what it is, but I am thanking the Lord regardless. Now, I'll remind you again to put on what state that you're from and we will be doing a drawing for this little mini whisk. And, um, I, uh, well, I told Linda, I said, I'm the, I can talk all day long. Doesn't bother me a bit, but it's something about getting behind this camera until I, um, I have a little more difficulty talking. Now, she and I, when we get together, I'm not, I mean, we could talk forever. Um, but, um, so I guess I'm saying I miss my sister. <laughs> but we have to take turns about cooking one day a week by ourselves. Because at one time a week, one of us, uh, we take turns. Because it is t hard to travel a hundred and something miles. Uh, whoever is going to the other person's house, that's they travel about 110 miles. And that's uh, back the round trip. And um, anyway, I... Um, I just appreciate y'all so much. I just wish I could see every one of you. I just wish I could just reach out and, and let y'all know how much we appreciate y'all following us. And don't forget to um, like and share our videos. Um, we, um, we, we think we got the best people in the world, but I know some of you that watches us may not have liked or follow or be following us you watch our videos sometimes but there's a difference you have to select follow if you want um for us to be for you to be counted as one of our followers you know we're so close to half a million we would just it would just thrill us so bad if we could get uh uh, half a million followers that would just thrill us to death and we're not that far from it um we thank y'all for the stars Y'all have just overwhelmed us with all of your gracious uh, love and support. And um, when we started this, in this July, I'll be three years ago, and um, we never dreamed that it would come to this. But you know what? The Lord knows what we need. And I think Linda and I both needed this to help us in our later years, you know, because it keeps us busy. And that is, that is a big part in staying healthy, is staying busy. I believe that with all my heart. My mother always told us, uh, I say my mother, <laughs> it's our mother, <laughs> um, always told us that uh, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. And you know what? That is so true. When you're not staying busy, there are so many thoughts that comes into your mind that um, that can get you depressed or get you to worry or just get you down, you know. So keeping busy is a main uh, part of staying healthy, is staying busy. Some of you cannot. I understand that. 
some of his uh, health, you can't. But mentally, you can stay busy by watching good videos with good, uh, not necessarily ours. There's a lot of good videos out there of other people that cooks and, and get a motivationals and things like that. Just keep your mind on good things, you know, and that will keep you, keep you motivated to, to keep going and not getting down. Just keep your mind busy. Read the Bible, you know, and there's always somebody that you know uh, would like to have prayer, you know. So um, I can always think of something you can do to keep from having an idle mind. And let me tell you something. I'm telling y'all all of this. But don't think that I'm not, that I'm exempt from this because the devil does everything he can to try to get me, I'm not nobody but me, to think on things that are not positive. I'm telling you, when you ask the Lord, now, when you ask the Lord for patience, what happens? There's many things that comes up that, um, that will cause you to uh, try your patience. That's just life. And when you start praying, you know, that you want to be closer to the Lord and all that, you're going to have things come up that, that you're going to have to fight. And the best thing I know to do is just tell the devil to get behind you. You're not going to listen to that. Um, but because we are kind of um, a, a kind of motivational influencers and other than just cooking, you know, Linda and I both, we encourage you. We talk about mental health. So we're kind of uh, motivational speakers also. But when you put yourself in that position and we've got all of y'all thousands of people out there praying for us, let me tell you, the devil does not like that. <laughs> he does not like that and he tries to do everything he can to affect us. But we're just not going to let it. We're just not going to let it. And um, so don't don't think that nobody's exempt from um, trying to be uh, uh, the devil trying to get you into a state of mind that's not good. We we, we fight it just like anybody else does. So um, anyway, just don't count your blessings. I know there's people out there that uh, some of you... Um, listen to us all the time just because you need a word of encouragement and i'm just here to tell you that uh you need to count your blessings you need to think on good things and uh there's always something that you can can find that um you're, you can be thankful for let me see if anybody has any questions uh linda uh yeah linda's still losing weight um, she's doing great. I um, I was on I was on that Octavia, Octavia. I I may be saying it wrong. Octa, Octavia is O C T I V I A. I was on that last year for. I started in July and I actually got off of it Christmas December, and I did. I lost a lot of weight and I I put a little bit back on. Not a lot, but a little bit. Um, but I'm, I'm at a healthy, I'm actually at a healthy weight. I'm not going to try to lose any. I'm just going to try to eat healthy. But um, Linda's doing a fantastic job on her health plan. And um, she's looking great. And she's feeling so much better, too. It does make you feel better. Um, but um, the biggest key for me uh, on losing weight is just eat smaller portions. And, uh, and don't eat after 4 o'clock. Sometimes I eat at 5, but I try my best not to eat after 5 o'clock. Sometimes I'll um, come in the kitchen around 7 o'clock and think, you know, I just would like a little snack or something. And then something triggers in my mind, no, you can't do that because it's after 5 o'clock and it's not good for me. Everybody has their own way, your body uh, does and I can't act her because I have acid reflux so I I try to think whenever I start to eat I try to think um, is this going to affect how is this going to affect me and you just have to um, say no you just have to say no and uh, Cokes I always love Cokes but uh, I don't drink Cokes every once in a while I will drink a Coke 
Every once in a while, I eat ice cream. I like ice cream, but I eat it in moderation. I just eat a little bit at a time, and that kills the desire for something sweet. Everybody, is body's different, and you have to work out what's good for you. That's what I can't tell you what I've done and what's worked for me because everybody's metabolism is different. So you gonna have to work out your own plan. I have a lot of you ask me what I'm doing and that's what my my suggestion is, is to figure out what's best for you. I had a, um, she's still a good friend of mine. When we lived in Angleton, a uh, very sweet lady and, I, and she's still a friend of mine, like I said, but she lost a lot of weight, over a hundred pounds at one time. And you know how everybody thinks, wonders, what are you doing? I asked her, because honestly, I thought she'd had her stomach staple. That's back, like I said, years ago. And because she lost so much weight, and you know what she told me? And, and I believe her. I know she did. She took a saucer. I call it, I call it a saucer. You can call it a salad plate or whatever. She said that she had a salad plate. And she did not put more on that salad plate than what the plate would hold a normal. I mean, you know, naturally you could pile it up. But that's how she lost her weight. She only used a salad plate and just just covered the bottom. That's all she did. When she eat, that's what and she would eat. And she didn't she didn't eliminate nothing other than what would fit in this plate. And she only eat three times a day. So that worked for her. But so you figure out what works for you and go with it. So that's my suggestions. I guess I it sound that I guess I have done a little bit of <laughs> preaching here this morning. I didn't mean to. I just I feel so good and I'm so thankful. Um uh, and um yeah fruits and vegetables are very good. Um and Barbara, yes, I, Barbara Hunt, I did get your card. And thank you so much for the gift. I was thinking, I, now that I'm feeling better, I still got all your cards, your get real cards you sent me. And uh, some of you sent me a gift. And I, I was saying, now that I'm feeling better, I gotta get all those cards out and reread them because I felt so bad when I was reading them. And I don't want to overlook anybody, but I do want to tell y'all thank you so much for all the Get Well cards because I got a lot of them. I'm going to go back and I'm going to read all of them. And the ones that did send me a gift, I'll do my best to send you a card. Thank y'all so much. Um, it's just, um, I, I, still don't, I still have a problem remembering things. I think I'll always have that. Um, but anyway, uh, I guess Carla, if you was, uh, are y'all putting where you're from, what state you're from, because we're fixing to do a drawing. I'll give you just a few more minutes because um, I want to give this to give this away. It's a small gift, but um, I just want to do something, a little something for you. Uh, uh, and share your sweetness is your weakness. And you know what? It used to be it used to be mine. I used to thought I had to have something sweet every day. But you know, I, I don't know if you know your taste changes from time to time. Um, I don't have to have something sweet every day. I do like sweets though. I do like sweets, and that's one reason that I um, I buy the uh, ice cream, and I would take two spoons, and I don't know how many calories in it, but all I know is that kills my appetite for something sweet. I'll eat two spoons of ice cream, and that helps me. Y'all have to do your own thing. When you're actually trying to lose weight, that probably wouldn't be a good idea. I'm just trying to keep my weight, and so, anyway, when I was actually on that diet, I did not eat any sweets. I, I did not eat any sweets, no Cokes for that, what, uh, July to December, six months. Um, I did. I really did follow a strict diet and took that Octavia. Uh, it's quite expensive, and that's um, uh, and a lot of it I couldn't eat. Uh, I don't want y'all to go out and. I mean, I'm not advertising Octavia. Um, it does work and it does make you feel good, but some of them I wouldn't eat. I, I couldn't eat them. They just tasted horrible. It's food, packaged stuff that you eat. 
but there's enough because they have such a variety. There's enough that when you're selecting what you want, because you pick your own foods out, um, that you you can get enough that you can eat. And another trick, to, another thing about it is eating every two hours. That trains your body to not store fat. That's another thing that I read. They give you a book this big uh, to read after that. And if you would eat every two hours a snack, just a little something, that will keep you from getting so hungry and it also uh, fills you up and your stomach will shrink. So if you will try to eat just a little something every two hours and drink lots of water, that's a big key in trying to lose weight. It's drinking a lot of water and changing your metabolism by eating every two hours. Matter of fact, I, I have a timer on my on my phone, every two hours it would be, and I, I would um, go pick up a snack, pretzels or something, just a little something, uh, pickles, dill pickles is good, uh, carrot sticks, um, pretzels is good, it, it's just, I don't eat a lot, um, I just, my mother, uh, she was a larger lady, and once she lost weight, she, um, she never did gain her weight back. Um, because she just eats small portions and I think your stomach shrinks whenever you do that because um, uh, it just changes your metabolism okay Cara do we have a winner you can you can uh, send me uh, I guess let me go get my other phone so you can text my other phone Carla to the winner of this little small whisk let me get it Okay, she had already texted it to me, and it is, oh goodness, you know my how I can pronounce names. So congratulations to Gala, G-I-L-D-A, Lowe Richardson. You're from Florida. Florida was the state we was looking for. I don't think we've done the state of Florida. Uh, we were talking, Linda and I was talking this morning, and if we have, it's been a long time. We both couldn't remember, but Florida was the state we was looking for. So congratulations to G-I-L-D-A, Galda Low Richardson. So you text the phone number. I mean, don't, don't do it till I get off air, but text it to the business phone, 903-235-4804 and text me your address and I'll get this in the mail to you. So I'm gonna sign off and then I will just come back on just for a brief minute and show you this corn casserole whenever I get it out, okay? Thank y'all so much for joining me. Um, I um, I went through the, the whole video and I'm still not feeling bad, so Y'all thank the Lord and rejoice with me. <laughs> thank y'all so much. And um, I will see y'all in, um, what time is it? Uh, probably about 45, about 45 minutes. I'll come back on and show you the finished uh, casserole. Love y'all. Don't forget to count your blessings. There are many, 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 many we can thank him for. Bye-bye.